Hi guys, this is Aggie from Travel on Her Shoes and I have promised you my dear tribe that if I get 20,000 likes on this photo, let me see, where is my feed, there it is, if I get 20,000 likes on this photo then I will promise a tutorial and I got 20, 23 almost, I mean so many photos I could show you how I edited, um, but I'll start with this one, uh, this is before on the left and this is after. Uh, I am using uh, Lightroom to edit all of my photos. This is an Adobe software and this particular one is Adobe Lightroom CC. So there are two versions of Adobe these days. I don't know why, but I'm using the CC version because that's where all my presets are. All right, so as you can see, this is uh, the before and this is the after. Uh, I just want to say right at the beginning, there is nothing wrong with this photo. Like. I know a lot of you is like, I like the original better. Why would you play around with the photo? It's like coloring. It's like playing. It's something, it's a creative process and there is no right or wrong answer. You just edit the way you see the world and the way you like it. So do not get upset. Uh, again, there's no, um, you know, I'm only editing because I love it. I love the fun of it. I love the coloring. It give, brings me joy. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I feel like, um, editing a photo is um, 50 if not 60 percent of a good photo you can save it a lot <laughs> especially if you're good at photoshop but then it's even more all right so let me let me show you from the beginning this is uh, the copy of this photo so i'll start over here and let's see how what it looks like so this is the photo uh, i have plenty of my own presets so the first thing i do whenever i start editing a photo is going through all of my presets and here on the left I get a little preview of what happens if I use my preset. I'm like, oh, that's not a bad preset, but I'm gonna keep looking to find uh, the right one. See, this one makes me look super pale, but it's not a bad preset, just not the look I like. Uh, and yes, these presets will be available on sale. And the funny thing is, like, it's crazy how much, see, that's not a bad preset either, but I, uh, I will keep looking and surprisingly, all the way down here to Aggie Sunset, is a preset I ended up choosing. I'm just gonna make it slightly brighter and you probably the your first reaction would be oh my god Aggie what are these white lines on the side on the side here that was like is warped exactly uh, so this particular preset if I go down over here in lens correction manual I distorted myself so this is the undistorted version and I always find these Sometimes when Mike was too close taking a photo of some other photographer, I used this distortion to pull, see, that's an exaggerated version, but see how it like, pulls the person in and it distorted a lot. I'm, I'm just going to do it at like 18% because I like when it's, um, it kind of pulls you into the photo and also makes me smaller uh, whenever it's shot too close. So, okay, let's do it. And now we're going to crop. So the very first thing on the left over here is tool. 8 by 10 which is the Instagram format and I'm gonna play around uh, these uh, two lines over here and two lines over here as so-called rule of third you want to have an object in either of these you kind of don't want to have an object running uh, through these lines so it would be very weird framing if I kind of put myself right there for example uh, a part or something that I would put it um, like, I don't know, just, well, you know, I kind of want to have, this is, I'm really bad at this tutorial, sorry, I need a coffee. Uh, you see, so for example, a fun framing would be to using this little square to put the fruit basket over there. And then that gives me my head in this, and this will leave it blank. You can either want to have a plank or busy, you don't want things to be running halfway through it, like this. See, that would be, oh, actually, I mean, it kind of works. So again, this is just a guideline and it's totally up to you. I don't follow it religiously. I just kind of see how the photo looks like. I have heard a lot of people that would say that um, they only crop on their phones just to get an idea. All right, cool. So, sorry about that. Let's do this. This, this will be my new framing. And now I kind of like the color of water already and uh, I'm not gonna play around with it too much, but I wanna show you and start with the most powerful and my favorite part about Lightroom. So here on the right, I'm scrolling down and there is the colors and this lets you play with colors individually. So you have red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, magenta. 
Okay, so I'm going to green and then no, I'm going to aqua actually and I just want you to see what happens when the slider uh, goes to the left and to the right. It's pretty straightforward. It already kind of gives you, oh, if you go to the right, it will be like super blue and if you go to the left, it's going to be green. Let's see if that happens. Ooh, super green. Ooh, super blue aqua. So that's like super simple to adjust to the water color that you like the most and if I go down to blue, that also affects the water. Um, so I like my water to be uh, more blue than green, but I know that Instagram prefers blue better. I mean green, uh, not my my blue, but I like this blue. I also like it bright. So um, luminance is the brightness only of this particular color. So take a look at the difference. What happens if I turn the luminance up and I just affect the water and I stay the same? Or what happens when I do exposure? Very different. See, so exposure is for the entire photo. Luminance of a particular color only affects this particular color, which is super powerful information to have. And I'm just gonna crank up luminance to give the idea of like this nice bright water over here. See, so I'm gonna keep it nice and bright. And then saturation gives me an idea of how saturated I want it to be. I don't like super saturated colors. I'm gonna keep it right here and I already am liking this photo so much better. I like this water. Second thing is, um, basically photo is flat. Like, uh, <laughs> obviously. Uh, <laughs> it's a very smart tutorial. I'm doing so well. Uh, so you wanna make it as three dimensional as possible. So your eye is way more powerful than a camera and way more powerful than a photograph. So if you want to give this idea of non-flat image, there are a few little tricks. Number one would be clarity, which kind of gives this idea of the of like a per person popping uh, popping out of the photo. I'm actually gonna go clarity plus ten because why not? Number two is adding shadows and highlights. So we see shadows and highlights here. Mine are usually down. Let's see, because I don't like bright photos like that, and shadows up. But that actually makes photos very flat. So my little trick is using this little brush over here, new, and then I will be darkening. So I'm literally just painting. And if you're not sure where you're painting, you press an O, uh, letter O, and it shows you that thing that you're painting in red. So I'm just gonna paint my body because what happens is I like my photos brighter so I almost overexpose them but then I overexpose my skin so I make myself paler and I like myself to keep at least the color that I was that I'm, I'm you know I'm working so hard on this tan why would I uh, make myself pale pale paler paler more pale <laughs> <laughs> on purpose. Alright, so we've got this and now that I exposure I brought it down to what it, my kind of skin color looks like I will then go down with blacks a tiny little bit with whites up, with shadows down, with highlights up and it kind of gives my skin that three dimension feel already and I almost want to make it even darker perfect. Alright easy now i'm gonna grab the brush again i'm gonna have even more fun because now i will be adding more shadows and it's literally girls should be experts in this because it's literally like painting so my brush is over here and i'm just gonna be adding cheeks i'm gonna be contouring my nose even smaller I, by the way, I never usually do that, but because this photo I got like super obsessed about, uh, I actually put quite a lot of effort into editing it, and that's why the reason why I said make sure that you like my photo, so I show you how I edit it. Usually, I can't be bothered to like do anything with my face because I'm too lazy, and usually my face is not such a close up, so I don't really care. But I do love, especially whenever you wear a swimsuit, to highlight those little shadows. Oh, that was wrong. I like those little shadows. So you see this, we have a shadow over here running into here. And that's like a natural line of a shadow. And there's shadow here as well. 
so that really helps yeah all right perfect so there's that so I made it a little darker and I then grab another brush another new brush and I'll be making it, oh I will make it uh, I will be making it but Jesus what is going on with me uh, lighter so anything like my chin the top of my nose forehead chest here here and if you find that it's too much then you can always play around with it yourself separately perfect all right um so i have that i'd say i am i feel like my skin is kind of like maybe too dark so this contouring that i did with little preview i'm like ah, i think it's too much so i can just make it slightly brighter this is a minimal change but it makes a big difference into this feeling of me popping out of the photo uh, i then might actually come to the colors and feel like oh i'm gonna make my skin more green versus more red this is an exaggeration but i'm gonna move to a minus three on my skin and go darker with my skin color too or maybe not maybe i just keep it like that again this is all like there's no right or wrong answer it's depending how you feel about it of course my uh, tendency is to make myself too dark because i love looking tan anyways uh, i am now moving to another layer and i'm going to be painting my hair um uh, i don't usually have to do anything with my hair but sometimes it catches a weird color so this is i don't do exposure i sometimes do whites just to and shadows to again add a little bit of dimension and sometimes clarity just so that my hair looks a little better see so here i went a little bit over my hair so i'm going to brush erase i'm going to be erasing this all right so far so good and then my favorite trick two things okay so right now i feel like this fruit is like way too colorful so i'm gonna put like paint this fruit with another brush and get rid of saturation a little bit because it's I'm gonna just leave exposure just a little bit of saturation maybe even too much i just don't want this fruit to be too overpowering and now let's go to the fun part as i zoom into my boobs <laughs> that fun part which is my glasses because that's where i had a lot of fun playing around so i went to i went to yeah, whatever because you can adjust them manually so i don't think i brightened up too much but i definitely added clarity and i'm painting my glasses over here so check this out and just to give you an idea if i press O, oh, i can see the layer and the area that's being affected so i'm painting my sunglasses i think they look super cool like this and now i can play around with the awesome effect look i can make them pinker that nice pink tint i can make them warmer and keep it like a 60s vibe let me zoom out just so you get an idea just by affecting these little glasses i'm actually just not gonna do much with the color or tint i don't think i did i just did clarity and i went blacks a little up and sharpness so it gave this like super cool even more three-dimensional effect let's take a look i'm not exactly what i used in my original edit <laughs> every one of my edits is different but yeah but that's basically the effect and last but not least i decided i think i did this as a gradual filter and i made the water even more clarified so it, again clarified so this is the areas being affected and i made it brighter like this perfect easy peasy let me see this is the original one and this is before this is after i don't know if it's the exact same edit i did on my instagram i did my best to follow the exact same steps but again this is a creative process and every time i uh, decide uh differently of how i would edit it 
but let me see this is the original photo oh slightly different but you can edit it so my blues were slightly different and uh, that's even a different edit that I started with so again long story short uh, it's a big difference um, between edits and it's nothing wrong with any particular edits it was just a lot of fun putting it together uh, I hope it was useful for you um, let me know if you have any questions make sure you check out my Instagram at travel underscore in her shoes and let me know if there's any other photo you want me to edit I will be more than happy to do that for you thank you so much for watching uh, love you heaps and see you in the next tutorial